Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with Fanville. Today's host is Tommy Lee, and he is their Vice President of Sales in North America. Tommy will be presenting today, and if anyone has any questions, he will answer them at the end of today's presentation. Tommy, I am finished for now. Thank you so much for being with us today. You can go ahead and take it on over. Thank you very much, Julie, for the great introduction. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our, quite frankly, a very brief, but I think a very important discussion about our Fanville uh, paging gateway, or we call our PA2. Um, why the PA2? I really think this is sort of the last piece of the puzzle. I believe most of our audience really focuses a lot on connecting voice and communications, but this is one piece called public announcement systems, which really causes a lot of people anxiety. And I want uh, people to know that there is a solution out there to really close off a potentially major, or even the closing off the entire voice communication solution. That's what I'll get into today. So that's what we call a Fanville PA2. It's really taken off quite a bit and that uh, many people out there are seeking for these things and it's good to know that this solution does exist uh, through Microcom. Uh, before I begin on focusing on the one technology, uh, as, as historic history does it, I always like to provide a full spectrum because many of you may not have heard of Fanville, but for what Fanville does, uh, we provide really three product categories. We have our phones here, which is our desk phones, uh, really famous for our updated design. We also have a good uh, second tier, which we have a, a total focus just on hospitality. So we develop phones specifically focused in on hospitality units as well. All of these items that you see here are SIP phones. And the third piece is really what we call our SIP security products. And what this is, is really intercoms, door access products and everything moving forward. And the great news about differentiation is that we have a, a Fanville device management system, which is called FDMS, which ties all of these things together that you can take the config file for all of these different units and upload them one at a time for easy provisioning. But for the sake of this one uh, webinar, I wanna focus in on the items that you see circled there. It's kind of scattered throughout our intercom series. And I think many of the people will be very pleasantly surprised to see how this PA2 fits into not only the phone deployments, but also to a lot of, to nearly all voice deployments moving forward. Um, I look at it as the last piece of the puzzle, because when you think about it, you know, there's always that one hinging piece, you know, when you upgrade, say a hotel or a retail market, great, what do you do about the PA system that used to be managed by your legacy systems? You know, what do you do with that? Or, or when you're deploying in a hospitality market, uh, what do you do about those gateways and the entrance system that you have right at the door? Well, the PA2 could be a specific situation that matches your requirements. So let's go ahead and kind of get into it a little bit. So what I'll talk about is really, uh, upgrade problems that, that, that we face when we go ahead and deploy many of the voice solutions. And I'll provide some applications and of course, some of the tips that I'll provide. You know, why do we need these tips? It's pretty simple. Um, with many of the other features, you have a display, a keyboard, but what about this one gateway? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and enable you to be able to take this device out of the box and be able to get the engine started really quickly. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me Oh, by the way, um, a soft copy of this presentation is available through uh, Julie McDonald. You can contact her and ask her for a soft copy and she'll be more than happy to email this copy over to you. So let's go ahead and get started. Now let's talk about the problems, right? When you think about problem one, PA systems were typically controlled by legacy analog or digital PBXs. You know, they were a side thing where people may have, have to put in a key code or a specific speed dial key that you may be able to go out and reach out to your PA and make an announcement. Uh, one of the, there were really two options that one can go. The first option is really sort of a start from fresh type of things where you actually take the old existing speakers which have probably been hanging there for probably five, 10, 15 plus years and you uplift all the cables and you replace them with IP versions. Sure, that's one version, but the issue there is that you have 
a whole brand new infrastructure that you're going to have to replace, which will also bring up cost. What we like to do is to basically enable you to leverage the existing hardware that's probably sitting there will probably have another decade of life, if not more to it. And you end up retrofitting the existing amplifier and speakers to work with your new upgraded SIP PBX system. So if you've upgraded it to SIP and you go, how do I go ahead and, and bridge that gap? Well, the PA2 will enable you to bridge the SIP upgraded PBX into uh, your analog interface, whether it's driving PA systems or perhaps doing, you know, uh, call announcement, uh, ringer amplifiers and things like that. And that'll allow it to do it. Now let's talk about problem number two. Another problem you might face is that a lot of hosted PBX might deploy, you say, how do I go ahead and make a multicast system on a branch? As many of you out there know, hosted PBXs have become really the thing of not only just large enterprise, but also for small and medium sized businesses. Because yeah, many don't want to have a PBX on-prem, so how do you deploy a multicast system for a hosted system? Well, when you do that, this PA system will be able to allow you to set up a gateway so that given the right call, call access or extension, you can go ahead and make an announcement to any remote branch whatsoever so that any speaker or PA system would be able to announce any of the voice communication you want to do and send that across all of the company. You, can, you may also be able to do this with uh, remote music in the background. You know, you assign music in the background of, at a lower priority, and then when something comes up, a, a big announcement that that will come over, take over, and once that is done, it'll go back to music in the background. So those are the two uh, major things. And then you also set up in most cases where people deploy phones into the factory environment, not in the factory environment, but into office environments. And when you deploy into an office environment, it's great because nearly everybody's sort of busy doing work and the loudest you hear is little whispers here and there. But what if you're putting in a phone system into a warehouse or a factory environment where you can't hear when they're under a new place? Well, what we do in this gateway can do is actually put in a phone ringer amplifier. Not only can you have a loud ringer uh, used by the PA2 attached to a horn mic if you wanted to, you could also attach a strobe light, which not only provides an audio loud cue that, that a call is coming through, but also can provide visual. So how do you make you know, the form of communication device operate with, a SIP, with all of these different premises? Well, you can do that just by introducing the FANGLE, what we call public announcement to gateway. I like to call it the Swiss Army knife because quite frankly, these are one of two different applications that one can use. And if you've played with Swiss Army knives before, it was this red pocket knife that was really, really popular back in the late 70s, early 80s, where it had scissors, you know, magnifying glass and everything. And that's what we like to use for this PA2. And what this really does is it provides really the core SIP technology into your network. Now here's a, a, a backdrop of the frontal view as well as the rear view. And when you look at the specifications of it, it reads HD video calls, two SIP lines on each. It's supported by PoE. But in addition to just this, it almost starts to sound like a phone when in, in actuality, that's what it really is because it provides the capability of a SIP phone of which Vandal spends quite a bit of time working with the PBX manufacturers to assure SIP compatibility. It also even has DSS keys, but, but integrated to it, we also included a 30 watt power amplifier so that if you wanted to drive a passive speaker, you can go ahead and do that. But it also gives you the ability to be able to drive other logic things. And I'll get more into that moving forward. So what people really did in the past was sometimes they would jerry rig an IP phone to really do a lot of the things that this PA2 device automatically does off the top and also provide a hardened case in, just in case you actually have a, uh, uh, an application where it doesn't take up a whole lot of room, okay? So let's look at the two pieces that we have available. We have the PA2 device here and what we also sell along with the PA2 device is what we sell is the PA2 kit. And what the PA2 kit provides to you is a camera, a push button, as well as a microphone and speaker. When you think about our, of our main line of products, we've basically taken the core SIP 
part of the phone and be able to deploy each of the different pieces, like being able to give you control of a, of a key, being able to, for you to control the camera if you want to integrate a camera into the, into the uh, uh, accessory unit, or to provide a speaker or microphone, depending if you want this to go one way or a two way speaker. We give the integrator or the service provider the ability to cater how they want them to do that. How does this add value? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and provide some revealing things that you can do with this adapter. This is what I did. I had two of these pieces to kind of give you an idea about the actual size of this gateway. This is not something that looks like this big PA2 gateway. Right here on, 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 on uh, this table, you'll see the PA2 gateway. It's about the size of almost two uh, poker cards, you know, or playing cards. When you put them side by side, and what you'll notice that comes in part of the box is that it actually has connectors that you can line up front on all the different connectors to make very easy wire connections. And we also include a mini screwdriver along with this kit so that you can basically bare wire the end of the cable, attach it to the end, screw it down with the screwdriver, and you're all done. Now, if you want to customize an interface or retrofit an existing SIP application, we sell an optional kit that provides you with all of the different features that I just showed before. So let's dive a little bit deeper and look at the front end of this, of this gateway and show, tell you what it does. And like I said, it has the front gateways, which gives you a very easy wire connectivity to either a passive speaker. Why would you want to use a passive speaker? This could be an outlet if you have one gateway that wants to make a global announcement, or you may have uh, a thing like an airport terminal where you have multiple speakers that are tied into a, an amplifier, which is either probably provided by Bogan, Viking, et cetera. A lot of these people do that. And what you can use is use the output here to drive uh, the input to that amplifier, which then will provide amplification into uh, the set speakers that are up in the speakers that are up hanging from above the speakers on the ceiling. Here's a simple kit, but in addition to that, we also have a logic input, which means that you can attach this to an IR sensor or perhaps have a button that you could, that a user can use on a phone or a button that they can use to open a door. And as I mentioned earlier, you have some output uh, logic as well, which allows you to attach an alarm light or even an entryway to an office building. Now, when you think about, you know, people want to go ahead and think about entryways, uh, many of the doorways to enter into department stores are held by mag locks, and you can use this to unlock a mag lock if you wanted to. And if, if POE is not available, you could also power this by an auxiliary power, either through wires here, in addition to the same power pack that you would use to power our phone that you could, that you could power up this pack as well. Now let's look at the other side. Um, you could actually attach a camera. Now you could put in a camera into this thing as well as some uh, non-volatile memory, which gives you the ability to record uh, audio in the background, the screen music, but you have a camera input here. And this is basically where you would attach the PoE connection that can provide power. Now keep in mind when you put in a PoE and, it, and it'll, re, it'll only enable this unit to power up to 10 watts into that specific speaker. Now, what you can do is actually supplement that by adding additional power right here, and then you could then put in more power, which would then boost the power watt amplification from 10 watts into 30 watts moving forward. You have some volume keys up above here, as well as what we call a health check uh, LED, which gives you an idea on, on what the health system of this gateway is. Now let's talk about the wide applications. I put together a really quick diagram, which kind of gives you a quick overflow of what it does. And this SIP PBX could be really any PBX, could be on-prem, off-prem. In this case, I just show really a two multicast address solution, which shows here is a single cast where you call into this gateway, and then this will provide a multicast solution into that office or into that branch, which provides an ability for all the phones or the speakers that are listening in on that device to be able to make public announcements just based on a simple phone call. Now, why is this great? You can have really this PA2 serve two functions. It could serve as the gateway itself to publish. So say, if, for example, you wanted to have extension 100 and 101. 100 could address all everyone that's listening on the network, 
And 101 could just simply be enabled to power somebody in a power amplifier here. So depending on what you want to assign to it, then it can go ahead and provide a multicast address that'll make an announcement to everybody. And any, any endpoint device who is listening would then be able to take your announcement and provide either an announcement to a passive speaker here, an alarm light, or even make an intercom announcement across PA phones. Many of the SIP phones that you find in the marketplace, including Panville, has the ability to listen in on devices or multicast addresses to play music in the background or make an announcement in case there's some emergency broadcast you have to do or providing a birthday cake in the kitchen, depending on what you want to say. This gateway provides that ability for you to be able to make announcements in corporate offices. Here's an example of a department store where, you know, where here someone attached a bullhorn here where they actually put two PA2s inside of a small encased box. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you know, these phones that can be retrofitted to do the same thing, they won't necessarily fit into a small form factor into this box. And you can make daily announcements of what the local sales is of a retail store or perhaps a, an education system on all of these different announcements that you can make. And then what, based on that one call, you could then do an auto answer on the PA2 and it will make an announcement for wherever you want to do it. But it fits in a small form factor that could go inside of a box. Now, I talked about a kit earlier on where we provide you with a box, a speaker, and all these videos. Well, here's a scenario where you can retrofit a control arm of, say, for example, a hospitality environment. For many people who spend a lot of time in the field, you spend a lot of time in, in, in hotels as well. And a lot of hotels, you have a lot of gateways here that monitor traffic, and some people can charge you know, uh, parking fees that you can enter in, or it could be a department store. But very often, you might run into a gateway that gets stuck, and that used to be controlled by the old PBS. How do you go ahead and retrofit that old gateway and provide audio to that, to that piece? Well, you can use a PA2 along with a button, or if you want to attach a camera to it, you can, and hook this into the front desk reception area. That Then you could drill a hole, retrofit the old button with the new button, and be able to provide two-way communication because this end gateway may run you, you know, $10,000, $15,000, and you could just retrofit an existing older gateway to upgrade it to work with the new SIP-based system. And that is a much lower cost option to be able to offer to your clients through the PA2. You know, here's a scenario where we actually deploy the PA2 in a subway station. This is a great one where every subway station that actually exists they wanted to upgrade an analog system. And what we did here was took the kit and be able to upgrade the video, the audio, as well as a button, which gives passengers the ability to call the central office in case they had a question or an emergency, where they can take a PA1, put it inside a box and connect it to the system. And then this way, the infrastructure is already there. And you can use that system to monitor using a, uh, you know, an Android phone or a bi-directional monitor and give you the ability to communicate to all the different platforms, and you can have a two-way conversation based that way too. As I mentioned, this this show actually shows a Fanville old C600 Android gateway, and we, we recently did an upgrade of a new Android phone, which is the X7A. You know, that will replace this phone, and it's far higher in terms of resolution, which contains a keypad and more. You know, here's a quick uh network diagram that'll provide that same application where you can look at this just basically as a phone you can have an ip pbx that's located hosted somewhere or actually on the network and you can have this operate as a phone and be able to be monitored one station or a whole network of stations to a central office and be able to monitor the phone and you can actually have calls forwarded from here onto your mobile device so if you need to leave your office you can go ahead and actually make the system work remotely as well. And that's what's great about it. So let's talk about a lot of the, 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 the partners that we have out there. The great news is that on the SIP end of it, we spend a lot of resources, Fanville does, to make our products compatible with many different people. This is just a partial list and it grows as we move forward. So you can assure full compatibility on products that we actually have fully certified on many of these platforms moving forward. Now let's talk about the last point, which is the tips. Now, 
because everyone here is used to deploying phones, phones have a keypad and a display. How in the world do I get the IP address of this gateway? Well, the truth is, is that, is that uh, it does have volume devices. And what you do when you pull it out of the box, it's set to a default static IP address of this. Now, you know, this is only the five minute nerdy part, which I can go ahead and get a little technical if you don't get involved. But if you happen to be interested, to change this into the two different network settings from static IP address to DHCP IP address, all you would have to do is really power it up, allow the device to boot up 30 seconds, and then you would press the volume key for 10 seconds and hear a beep. And what then you can do is then follow along and it will enable the device to pull its own IP address off the network into its capabilities so that now it will be announced and it will actually announce through the loudspeaker its new IP address and you could put that IP address on your browser and be able to have a graphical user interface. How do you get the firmware update? Once you're able to get in, I suggest that you go to the firmware, download it, upgrade the PA2 to the latest firmware, and then you should be up and running. If you are new to this, feel free to go ahead and contact support, or even you could contact me as well directly because I'm resident here in California and feel free to give me a call and I'll be more than happy to step you through along the way. That's kind of it of what I have as a brief overview. I didn't want to dig too deep and really make everybody fall asleep getting too technical, but at the same time, I want to show a real simple solution that allows you to be able to close that last 10, 20% of your voice communication system by using this gateway. You know, some of the other things it can do is really elevators. You know, many uh, people have uh, an elevator capability where you can attach a PA2 that's actually hooked into these lifts that go up and down, and then you can call each individual elevator and or have them contact you across the new system. These are all the different ways that you can retrofit where perhaps the physical device of a phone doesn't match in, but you can retrofit uh, some, some other existing device to make it SIP as well. You know, that's all I have, Julie, and I guess I will move on to any particular questions and answers to you. And I want to thank everybody for your time. And Julie, now you have the floor. Thank you very much, Tommy, for that wonderful presentation. I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. And I do have some questions for you. Let's go ahead and get started with the first one here. Uh, first question here, of course, uh, do the phones, the cameras, the PA and door entry all work off of the same software and controller? Yes, in fact, um, the PA2, I mean, all of them would end up sharing the same SIP stack that Fanville uses. But as I mentioned very early, uh, much earlier, all of the door access units, the PA2, as well as our phones, all of them have what we call config files. Many of the people in the industry call them templates, where you can go ahead and set specific buttons and settings onto these templates, and you can use uh, two options. You can use the FDMS to deploy these features onto all of the different phones. So take, for example, you and I are located on the West Coast. And if our bars are located uh, on the West Coast, there's no need to constantly go back into the clock and reset everything to the Pacific Coast, you know, because uh, it defaults to, I think, Greenwich Mean Time. And then you set the time zones as well as the extensions. And you have a quick template of all the different buttons where the phones are. Well, the good news is that you could take out config files, update all the basic features so that you, the deployment becomes very easy, not on just our phones, but all the different features, including the PA2 into the field with much less hassle. Now we have the FDMS that does that, but many of our PBX partners as well offer provisioning capabilities. And so my best suggestion is you choose one or the other. Many of the PBXs will offer that ability and be able to send it. And that way you have one engine to work with. If they don't have it and you need something that wants to supplement it, then you can use both or use ours depending on what your specific needs are. Thank you very much, Tommy, for that. Next question here for you. If a customer needs assistance with network design, would Fanville be able to help with that? Wow, that's a really big question. Um, I can't <laughs> count how many, how often when they buy a system and they want to integrate it, they realize that something is not working. A network can really contain thousands and thousands of connections and each one of these thousands can cause problems. 
what we can do is we can actually isolate it down to see whether or not whatever issues that they run into uh, may be either attributed to us, but then as well, we could also point that integrator uh, for the direction of maybe giving them hints of what, it caught, what, what could be causing the issue. Because very, very often, you know, primarily with smaller businesses, they may have a very rudimentary network that they want to put 10 or 15 phones that are pretty high in demand in terms of bandwidth is concerned. So those things are easy to do, but then when you get a little more sophisticated on your network, fault can lie anywhere, but at least for the integration of our solutions, we'll definitely help them out and make sure that, that the issues related to voice communication is either isolated to us, or we could point them perhaps to where it may be on this on the specific network. So the answer to your question is kind of 50-50. We may not be able to solve their problem because a lot of the network problems are not born from us, but we know a lot of the issues that we've been in the business for a long time are where they could probably take a look at to see and isolate other issues that might crop up in upgrading the voice system. Excellent. Thank you, Tommy. Next question here for you. Mm -hmm. Regarding PA2 models, are the mounting parts provided in the package when it's ordered? Yes, in fact, um, on the on the pieces that actually uh, on the on the on the table picture that I've shown, there's actual templates that actually you can show and trace out the templates on a wall. And I think you may be able to find some screws. Even the kits themselves, they actually come with mounting screws along with them, along with instructions on how to configure them uh, that come piece by piece. So the answer is yes. Uh, you know, with in terms of the actual mounting hardware, I would have to double check on the PA2 whether it comes with screws or not. But quite honestly, you know, those could be found at a local Lowe's or Home Depot anywhere that you can just mount them depending on where, where, where it goes. But we do provide a template that gives you the idea of how big the screws have to be. Thank you so much for that, Tommy. Next question here for you, also mm -hmm. regarding PA models. Um, Will it support any cameras and NVRs? Um, we have, I can't say any. I know that 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 you can actually put in many of the IP-based cameras because the PA2 is a SIP-based device. Now, I, you know, there are probably hundreds of different brands out there. I do know that it works with the camera that we provide. And I've heard in maybe a few cases where they've attached an IP camera outside onto this, to the input of this camera. And to say all, that would be a very broad statement. I would say that you, one can get one and be able to put in their, their IP address onto the configuration of the camera. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it will work, but I can't guarantee that it'll work with every single camera. It does have the ability to support, I think, VGA-based quality cameras that could support that resolution. But whether or not it supports Everything is, is, is sort of a broad statement. I can't issue a guarantee, but I think you can pick up a device and be able to see whether or not, you know, it would work on, on your particular camera screen, whether it's ours or a third party device. Excellent. Thank you for that, Tommy. A couple more questions here. Next mm -hmm. one, of course, regarding the PA2. Um, can you tell us about the warranty on this device and how uh, support would work if anyone were to if anyone were to call and, and have an issue? Sure. The warranty on this device mirrors our phones. Basically, it comes with a two-year warranty, and that's when someone purchases it from you, and that when that's when the clock starts. Uh, and that's so when they have it, uh, we basically warrant everything based on our specifications so that, you know, we make sure that everything works. Um, if you happen to put, you know, uh, a, a car battery into this thing and fry it, I mean, that, that's something we cover on the warranty. But there is a quick screen session that we kind of go through to normally isolate what the problem is up front. But once we deem that it's a defective product, then they just need to return it to you and we'll go ahead and credit, you know, provide any level of credit to you so that so that they get a replacement device as soon as possible. Thank you for that, Tommy. Next question here for you. Can you tell us a little bit about where Fanville products are manufactured? Yes, uh, our products are manufactured, probably 98% of all of the endpoint manufacturers are, are manufactured in China. 
Excellent. Thank you for that. I know we talked about um, uh, per, uh, how Fanville might be able to help with network design. Uh, yep. What about um, general hours of support? What's the best way to reach out to, Van, to Fanville? Uh, is there uh, perhaps a forum which is really informative yep. or can we reach you? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, there are several different tiers. Um, the broad tier is providing, support, uh, sending an email to support at fanville.com. Secondly, since I am local here to in, 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 in USA, you could give me a call. And very often, you know, I, I happen to have a technical background, but I happen to be like a registered nurse. I might be able to point you in the right direction and be able to bring you up to a certain idea. And then if I can't resolve it, then I could probably get product management involved and in being able to point you in the right direction. So there is local support where you can give me a call. And typically what I find is that we know we work in a global environment and that our product management group as well as our support group tends to extend their hours beyond what we would consider as business hours to really enable to support you. So very often when you send in a question that has an overlap time, likely you will end up getting a reply anywhere within five minutes all the way, but pretty much uh, typically I've seen it within 24 hours within a response. And I would suggest that maybe you copy me that I passed my email address so that you can copy me. And what I may do is they turn you back and see if I can, you know, get you up and running locally as well. I've been in this business for a long time and I kind of understand a lot of the things that people may struggle through and maybe able to give you a quick, a quick boost up front to get things working before we have to get product management involved. Tommy, thank you so much for all of that valuable information and for answering all of those questions for us today. And also, thank you to, for everyone uh, attending today's webinar. And if anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown here today, please visit us at www.microcom.us. And remember, this webinar presentation has been recorded and will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel so we can view it again. Tommy, excellent webinar. Thank you so much for being with us today. Until next time, everybody have a fantastic day. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, everyone.